The David Lynch Foundation has provided scholarships in the last six years for over 150,000 at-risk students to learn to meditate, 150,000. And that's throughout the United States, all over Latin America, the Middle East, Africa, Asia. We are very fortunate actually to have here tonight with us, and I would just like to ask him to stand and be acknowledged, the sort of the grandfather of the David Lynch Foundation and the grandfather of bringing meditation to children, at-risk children. He's the one who coined the term quiet time. He's been an educator, a devoted educator here in Washington, D.C. for 46 years. And he is my hero and very dear friend. Would you please stand, Dr. George Rutherford, and receive our appreciation. With Dr. Rutherford's guidance, about four years ago, we started a program, started funding a program in San Francisco uh, at the Visitation Valley Middle School. We're going to hear about that in a moment. But the first school, 350 kids started meditating. And from the success of that program, <clears throat> we've now taught 2,000, at the request of, this, of the San Francisco Unified School District, 2,000 middle school and high school kids have learned to meditate, along with 350 educators, principals, staff, administration. And what these schools do is they begin and end each day, part of the day's curriculum, with about 10 to 15 minutes of quiet time. And it's a voluntary program in this regard. The whole school is quiet, but a child can sit quietly and nap they can do silent reading, or they can practice transcendental meditation. And like 99.99999% of the kids and everyone loves meditating. We're going to see right here just for a moment a wonderful video that was put together of highlights, some of the kids talking about that pro the program in San Francisco. I'm then going to show you a few of the research studies, quick, quick, quick. And then we're going to hear from the superintendent of the San Francisco School District in a meeting just last week where he endorsed this program and said it was the single most effective educational innovation he's seen in 30 years. So if we could have that video. I think that we have the most amazing kids. I love their energy and emotional intelligence. But what's different about these kids is that they need a lot more. Many of my students are in charge of taking care of their household, basically. Their parents work, and so they're in charge of their siblings. Or they work and help, you know, financially support their families. There are a lot of kids who live in neighborhoods that aren't so good. Crime, addiction, they see things that I never even thought about when I was in high school. My last two years, I was locked up. Robbery, gang, things like that. There's different levels of stress that the students have. Um, some of it's environmental. Some of it is, is organic and chemical. There's definitely stress that students experience around school and anxiety um, around grades. I feel like I do have a lot of stress in my life. I was always getting truancy letters. I was never really in school. Our principal, Richard Duber, was the first to bring us the idea of uh, having a quiet time program. It was certainly for me a level of skepticism regarding whether we could really get students at this school to, to be willing to try and meditate it would allow them that time for themselves that they don't get. And something that actually releases the stress as opposed to time for themselves that would make them more stressed. We do it at the end of first period and at the end of seventh period. And the entire class gets quiet. 
Those students who want to meditate have that opportunity because we have an adult in the room who is making sure that they feel safe and comfortable. When I, when I had my first meditation, I felt so relaxed. You sit, you sit and like you, you, you just like let just loose relax. and relax. It's just you and your mind going back and forth. Just you have to think this stuff out. Sometimes you just need that. And I'm all tired and fatigued, but after a quiet time, it just releases all the stress, helps you feel more energetic. I used to say, I'm going to get my grades up, I'm going to do better. But yeah, it was just what I said. It never happened until I started meditating. Because I got better grades, and like, I'm not really all that mad anymore. You felt so good and at peace, and you just felt like nothing like negative could get you. I feel like refreshed, like I'm, like I'm just full of energy and I'm just ready to like continue on with my day. I think it gives them rest. I think that it gives them a sense of well-being and security and like independence. When I start meditating, like a week later, I start to change, and I'm not gonna change just like that. You feel me? You gotta like something gotta help me. I was just meditating a lot, like even Saturdays and Sundays. Before, it was like kind of hard to concentrate because I had a lot of like problems in my life. I mean, I still do, but not like that. I think that it's, it's pretty amazing that kids have op an opportunity to experience this, especially at this phase in their life. Quiet Time has also helped with the community in the classroom. For example, my fifth period class, they were really rough at the beginning of the year. And now it's just turned into such a nice way to start the day. I just feel like I'm not alone. I have something with me that I can take, like to help me, keep me at peace and stuff like that. Meditation is awesome. I would love to see my students graduate from high school and go to college and learn to participate in the world in a way that is helpful and productive and fulfilling. In order for them to do that, they need love, they need education, they need support, and I think TM is a, is a part of that. Schools are battling what they call the predictive power of demographics. In San Francisco, and I'm sure it's everywhere the same, you can look at a zip code and you can say, these many kids are going to drop out of school, these many kids are going to end up in the prison pipeline. In these four schools, there's been a complete reversal. And if we could see the first chart, I'll just go through this very quickly. This, this data was provided by the San Francisco Unified School District. And I should say, in your goodie bag, in addition to receiving Dr. Rosenthal's book, you're going to get a little look for this. It's a little report on the San Francisco schools. In this first chart shows that attendance at Visitation Valley Middle School was at 98.3% last fall. And 18 of the graduating eighth graders, all meditators in that eighth grade class, were, uh, received a perfect attendance. That means that 18 students did not miss a day of school for three years. Next chart. Suspensions trended down significantly. Visitation Valley used to have one of the highest suspension rates in the district. Now the school has one of the lowest, even compared to the middle class schools. Next chart. Before quiet time, you can see on the left, before quiet time started at this school, none of the graduates went to the high-performing Lowell, Lowell High School. This year, a record 18 eighth graders are going to Lowell. And the final chart. When the quiet time program was at its first year at Visitation Valley, the eighth grade served as a control group. This allowed the San Francisco Unified School District to conduct rigorous analysis to determine if quiet time program had an impact on star test scores. When the eighth grade controls were compared to quiet time students, the analysis found that the quiet time students were significant, scores were significantly higher, and the biggest shift was with the lowest performing schools, 
the below basic, and the far below basic. And last year, the overall star test scores at Visitation Valley increased 40 points, the highest increase of any middle school in the district. And in honor of this, Jim Durkee, the principal of the school, was named the National Middle School Principal of the Year. The David Lynch Foundation has provided scholarships in the last six years for over 150,000 at-risk students to learn to meditate, 150,000. And that's throughout the United States, all over Latin America, the Middle East, Africa, Asia. With Dr. Rutherford's guidance, about four years ago, we started a program, started funding a program in San Francisco uh, at the Visitation Valley Middle School. We're going to hear about that in a moment. But the first school, 350 kids started meditating. And from the success of that program, the term quiet time, he's been an educator, a devoted educator here in Washington, D.C. for 46 years. And he is my hero and very dear friend. Would you please stand, Dr. George Rutherford, and receive our appreciation. Asia. We are very fortunate, actually, to have here tonight with us, and I would just like to ask him to stand and be acknowledged, the sort of the grandfather of the David Lynch Foundation and the grandfather of bringing meditation to children, at-risk children. He's the one who coined